Hi everyone, I'm going to give you a full tutorial demonstration of Magic Cell Notifications. It has been many years since I first originally created this add-on and it has been added to uh, time and time again, people have requested new features, etc. So I'm, I want to start over and make a brand new tutorial uh, just explaining how everything works. So the first thing you need to do is load up Magic Cell Notifications and run for the first time. Now, if at this point you get an error or a problem, it is often caused because you're logged into multiple accounts at once. And the simplest solution is just log out of everything, log back in with just one account and try again. And it, and it should uh, um, connect to Drive and it should all work OK. Um, once you are logged in um, and you run, the, run for the first time, it says that Magic Notifications has been enabled and you can launch it through the menu again. What that has actually done is it's installed what we call triggers onto this uh, Google Sheet, which is how Magic Cell Notifications runs. So I'm going to start by explaining that. So let's go and launch the sidebar menu. And I'm actually going to scroll down straight to the triggers, which are here, these setup triggers. And there are four. By default, the top three are ticked. Um, and I'm going to explain what each one does. Edit trigger means that any kind of edit at all on the spreadsheet causes Magic Cell notification to run. Now you can imagine if there's lots of you editing a spreadsheet, that means it's going to run an awful lot of time. So you need to be a little bit careful using edit trigger, depending on the type of spreadsheet you're using. Um, the second one is form submit. So if you've got a Google form attached to this Google sheet, anytime someone submits the Google form, your Magic Cell notifications will run. And the third one is hourly. So every hour it will run. So at least once an hour, it will run to check whether you've got any matches. And the final one is daily, and daily means that basically it will just run once a day. Now, you can have all of these ticked if you want, um, or, or just one or two. It depends. It's entirely up to you. When you're um, in the process of making and setting it up, I, I strongly suggest you untick edit trigger and just press update triggers. And, and don't have the edit trigger enabled because as you are editing your rule sheet, you could be setting off uh, the triggers. Um, let me just uh, turn off daily and try again, because you should get a, a notification that there we go. It has successfully updated your triggers. OK, so that means right now there's only form submit and daily that are running. Um, and I've took the others off. So if we go back to the top, let's start at the beginning and we're going to set up a rule. And then we've only got sheet one here. Now, if we were to um, choose this drop down, you see there's only sheet one. If we add more sheets, um, these will also appear here but you've got to refresh it, so you've got to tell it. So if we close that and launch it again, when we refresh now, we'll have multiple sheets that we can choose from. So that will list every worksheet available. So if I choose sheet one, and we're going to start with a cell reference, okay? We're going to start with a simple thing, which is cell reference, and I'm going to choose A1. Now, because I'm doing a single cell reference, I do not tick any of these three options because this is a single cell reference, and I want it to be equal to eight. When A1 equals eight, I want it to, to send me an email. Now, if I press in now, I put my email address. You can put email addresses. You can also put a, a webhook in there. If you do put a webhook in there, tick it to say that that's what you've done. And um, on the rule sheet, it'll do something different. It tells a Magic Cell notification what you've done. But I'm just going to keep it simple. If A1 equals 8, send me an email. So I'm going to add that rule in there. You will always get an error if you don't already have the worksheet. So you press, yes, I want to create it. And it will add the worksheet in and it will move it to the front and it will put that rule in for you. And you'll see that it's not matched and uh, it has not sent an email there. So let's test it. So if A1 equals 8, let's go to sheet 1, A1 equals 8. I've changed it to 8. Go back to my rules and you'll see actually that nothing has happened. And that's because we don't have edit trigger on. So we're setting it up at the moment. However, you can test it because if you go down here and manually run a check, so if I manually run the check, you'll see it matches, it's sent the email, and I can go to um, my email and check it. Because I haven't changed the email template, and they just say default in there, when I go to my email, let's just refresh that, here it is here, and you'll see this is the default image, um, email. It gives you some standard things, that, you know, what the spreadsheet's called, what the rule was, and here's a link to it. You say it's matched, okay? Um, you can alter that. So if you want to, instead of having a default template, you can say you can change it to anything you want. Hello. And you can just put whatever you want in there. Now, in order to make that work and test that, let's change that away from eight. Let's run the check again. And what will happen is it will go back to not matched and not sent. But it's ready to send again. So in fact, to show you this, why don't I turn on the edit trigger again and update the triggers? 
And this way, if any edit is made, magic cell notification will run. So if I go to sheet one, and I've actually put eight in there, as soon as I press enter, magic cell notification is going to run. And I'll go to here, you'll see matched, sent, and it should have sent this email template. The default for the subject is the same, so that's defaulted. So if we go back to here, we go to our email, it will come through in just a second. Here we go. And you'll see the actual content is the same, but the subject is still the default. So you can mess around with them. Now, the other thing to notice about that, if I go up here out to the top and open up the tutorial document, okay, this does have everything you need to know. But one of the things I'm going to jump ahead to is this uh, insert fields. Now, there are using these special codes. If you use these codes into your email, it will replace the code with the actual uh, thing. So in this case, worksheet name, if I go back here and add in worksheet name, now actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control on the keyboard, press enter and paste in worksheet name. And then this time I need to make it do it again. Um, so I'm going to take that back to um, away from eight. So it goes back, you'll notice it goes back to not sent. I'm going to put eight back in, press enter, and this time it's going to match again. And this time it should say sheet one, because I'm on sheet one, my rules for sheet one. So when I go into there, load it up, and you'll see sheet one's there. So if you hold control and press enter, it puts it on a new line. So you can adjust your emails and manually change your emails that way as well to put on new lines and things. It's not the best, but it does work fairly well. But you can put the codes in. So do use... Um, these codes, okay, these ones will work with any rules. These other ones will work with specific rules, like for example, column rules, okay? So you can ask me if you want something specific here, but you basically just copy that code in in order to personalize the email in with some special codes. Um, so that is uh, the sort of standard of how it works. Um, if you go across here, you can deactivate a rule by unticking that. You can change to a HTML email if you want. And what that basically means is inside your email, let's, for example, let's use HTML tag bold. This is bold. And I close my HTML tag. Um, that means that when that email is sent, these tags don't get actually in the email. But what happens is this bit of text to be bold. Okay, So if you're familiar with HTML, you can actually make some really nice looking emails using HTML code. Um, at CC and BCC, just put in email addresses that you want in there. And if you want more than one, separate them by a comma. Highlight changes means that on the worksheet itself, if this changes, it will highlight it in yellow for you so you can see where, what's changed recently. Um, no reply, reply to and send a name. Uh, all fairly straightforward. Just put in there what you want. Just manually type in for reply to and send a name. These two, uh, and maybe this sender one as well, only work if you've got an education account or a business account. I don't think they work with personal accounts, but that's just something you can try out and see. Um, so that's sort of the basic cell notification rule. Um, if you want to, let me um, turn off edit trigger, and I'm going to update that. One of the reasons I'm going to do that is in a moment, I'm going to show you how you can copy these rules down. Okay, so I don't think it's actually done it because I didn't get confirmation. There we go, there's my confirmation. So now I want to make a load of rules. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to drag down and I'm going to make all these rules really quickly. Now, I've turned off edit because I don't actually want this to work yet. One of the reasons is, is I'm going to end up with a load of errors here because these are all the wrong sheets. I don't have these sheets. So actually, if I copy that one to there, then highlight and then actually set it to all sheet one. That's much better, that's what I want, but I could have a rule for all of these different uh, cells. It could be the same rule, it can be different rules. I can manually change these, okay? So if you don't want equal to, um, you can change it to other values as well. Like these ones are all listed here. So greater than, less than, not equal to. These are all, you just type those in and they will be different and they'll work in there. Um, you'll see that these all say matched and sent. And well, they haven't been matched and sent, but that's just where I dragged it. So if we press manually run check, what you'll see happen is all of these will go to not match, not sent, and it will just work its way down there because obviously none of these cells actually have anything in them, don't have eight in them, so they won't match and they won't be sent. Um, one thing with notification rules, the single notification rules, you know exactly what row the, the data is on. So if, let's just take A3 rule. If we wanted to use the value in our email of, for example, B3, so the value next to it or, or along the same row, we could actually do that in here. So instead of having an email template like, that, like this, we can use a formula. So concatenate, and then we can choose um, this is the, oh, actually, I need speech marks. 
So this is the value in um, column uh, uh, column B or something like that. And then if I comma, and this time in there, I actually go to sheet one. So this was B3. So if I click on there and it'll put sheet one B3, if I close my bracket and press enter, this is the value in column B, um, but there's nothing there. If I was actually to put in here, so let's say it was someone's name. So let's just put my name in there. Um, then we put that in there and that will filter in there. So when the email sends, it will send there. And you notice that I need space there, so I put a space in there and I can build my email using formulas, okay? All of the stuff in Magic Sound Notifications works with formulas. So if email address, let's say we don't want to hard code an email address in there, we might want to put an email, a list of emails in this other sheet. So emails, um, and so we put an email address in there. We could have like name here, so like your put name like that, and then we could use it to like match against this. So I mean, simply instead of that, do equals, go to that cell, uh, was it sheet two, and just manually click, press enter, and the email address go away is in there. The email address is there, but it's actually a formula that's done it rather than uh, a manually typed in. You could use if formulas or vlookup formulas to choose. The, the uh, email address depending on something else okay so this is very customizable all magic cell notifications does is look at what's currently the text in this cell and then it says h at gmail.com it'll just use that so the same with this it'll just look whatever the text is as long as it's not default it will use what's in there um, and obviously there's a bit of code that works out that if it sees this dollar sign in this this special code it will replace that with whatever it needs to do. But that's really helpful. And a lot of people ask me that. And with single cell notifications, you can do that really easily. You can't do it so much with column uh, and row rules and things like that, but um, that is hopefully something we'd like to develop further. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is the other options available. If you don't wanna use single cell rules and you want to make use of the column rules or the range rules or the row rules. So on the sidebar menu, again, you can choose which worksheet you want to manage. So I'm gonna keep the sheet one. I'm going to actually monitor column A. So I'm just gonna put A in, but then I must remember to tick this box to say we're using column, column rules. So if we do when column A is equal to five, Again, I'm just going to use an email address rather than Slack, and I'm going to add that rule. Again, we're going to get the error. There's no column rule sheet, so yes, we want to create a column rule sheet. It will add it in, move it to the front, and then add the rule that we just made. So we set when sheet one a, a column A is equal to five, and so if we actually have a look here, nothing is equal to five in here. Um, now, because I've got the edit trigger off. If I now add in a load of fives, okay, one thing about column rules is it can match multiple matches at the same time. That is why it's difficult to uh, reference the next column along if you're using column rules because you don't know what row it, it could be. And it, this is used for if people only want it to run once a day and to tell them all the matches at once, okay? There are a few things we can do with the email that you can identify what's changed, but we'll get to that in a second. So if I just use the manual uh, run, the, run the check for now, it will match, um, it will check it first and it will match um, and you'll see what happens. Please know it is doing the notification rules first. So it's running the notification rules before it gets to the column rules. But there you can see it's just changed to one. And if I scroll across, I've kept the default email there. Um, I've actually got all of these matches all in one go. Now, if I go to my email and check the email that I've received, you'll see what this is the standard email. And it tells us that this is what the rule was. And these are the new matches that have occurred. And these are the total matches. OK, so they're the same at the moment. But as we change it, you'll see what happens. So let's go back. Um, let's turn edit trigger back on and update those triggers so that it happens straight away. So we can uh, get this going a bit quicker. So let's go into sheet one. Um, this time I'm going to uh, add another five there and a five there. Again, it's going to run the column, uh, the notification rules first sheet, then it's going to run the column rules. So you'll see this flash because this log will move over to the previous log to show the differences between the two. I'm just going to wait a few seconds. There we go. And it's found uh, the differences. You see it's changed to two and two there. So if we go check the email, we will see the difference there. Let's wait for it to come through. Oh, we've got two there. Uh, so we've got one there where it's matched the same, and then we've got the other there. 
um, it's done that. Okay, so I think it's ran it twice. Okay, and it didn't quite work perfectly then, but it's, it's ran it more than once, um, essentially. And that's probably where I did two edits and one was catching up with the other. That is the downside of the edit rule is it's gonna fire multiple times. So you've gotta be a little bit careful. Um, let's now look at the uh, manual, okay, for column rules, because there's a couple of uh, special codes that you can put in to your personalized messages. So if we go look at those, you will see here there's column values and column new values, okay? So if we have column values, and I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. So let's put column values in. So our template here, column values, I'm gonna do control enter to get on a new line, and I'm going to put in column new values, okay? And so I'm gonna pop that one in there. Oh, one, one. Um, where am I going? There we go, pop that one in there. And then let's do another change. So let's do um, five into there. Again, we'll have to wait a few seconds for it to update. I've only made one edit, so hopefully this should move across perfectly and then give us a new new log. There we go. They're different as they should be. And it's now sent us the email. It's gone to three. So if we check the email again, this is where you can see the difference. There is one new five, which is that. And these are the current ones here. So you can see the values, not the cell references. Okay, so that's slightly different. Um, if you want the um, cell references, then you can use these top two, the new value cell references or the current value. So these are the, as it says here, these are the cell references. So you can use these to get hopefully exactly what you want. Okay, from your emails, and you can, and that's all there. Um, the other thing is column rules works just the same as, as the previous ones where you've got the option to deactivate it. You can do HTML emails, CC, BCC, etc. Okay, you've got this additional thing here, which is actually the values that are coming in that's used by the system when it's sending the emails. Now, if you want to do a row rule, okay, you can do the same thing. Let's say you want to monitor row five, you tick row five, and then you can do equal to, I don't know, seven. And then you can choose your email and you can add a rule. Again, we get the same error because we don't have a rule sheet. So it adds in the row rule sheet and you're away there on your row rule sheet. You do the same thing with a range. With the range, however, a range is like this. So A1 to colon AX, for example, that will monitor that range. So that's how that's different. And then you would tick range, go through the process and it would add a range sheet. Um, the one thing to know with all of this is that it will always do notification rules first, then column, then row, and then range. And then if you also add the multiple rules sheet, it'll do that one last. So it can take a while if you've got all of these sheets. Most people don't have all of them. If at any point you want to deactivate an entire sheet, one way you can do it, if you just rename the sheet, and if I just put a one on the end, it doesn't matter. As long as I don't call it exactly notification rules, that sheet's now not being used. The way Magic Cell Notification works is it looks for the name of the sheet. So if you rename one of these, you will break it, it won't work. But that's also a way you can turn it off quite quickly. So if you realize you don't need these, um, you can turn them off. You can also delete them. If you just want to delete them and start again, go for it. You delete the worksheet and then you can um, you, you know, add it again and it will ask you if you want to add a new one. Um, a couple of things to also say, we talked about triggers before. Quota remaining, um, that is set by Google. Google set those limits. So if you have a personal account, it's 100 a day. Um, if you have an educational business account, it could be up to 1,500 a day. So that's not something Magic Cell Notifications is setting. That is something Google is setting. So I'm afraid I can't change that for you. I mentioned the multiple rule sheet. So this is experimental. This allows you to have two different criteria. Uh, it's brand new. So please do have a look if, and see if that helps you um, with your setup. A reset add-on button. I just want to explain what this does. You can press this at any point and you cannot worry about the fact if you pressed it that any of your worksheets will disappear. It does not delete any of your worksheet. What it does is it actually deletes all of these triggers. So it deletes all the triggers and it adds these top three again by default. So it's a way of just kicking it back into life. If for some reason it stops firing for you, um, it may be you just need to force it to add the triggers again. And, and that's what that reset add-on button is for. So if you have problems, it's not working, do press the reset add-on button and try that as, a, as an alternative. Um, obviously, you can contact me. I'm quite happy to be contacted. Um, I do try and reply to everyone if, and help you solve it if I can. Um, I think that is pretty much everything. I mean, one thing I'd say is, um, if you can donate, I really appreciate it. it. Does you know give me time to 
add more and develop more things so please do uh, do that if you can obviously it's not a requirement and i do like my add-ons to be free um and if, and also if you're if you're a teacher then uh, i could recommend my book to you uh, which does go through all the basics of google for education lots of tips and tricks there all right thank you very much